guys, welcome back once again. So I have Abhi here with me, and uh, he's here to talk about how was his journey after clearing IIT mains and advanced, then coming straight to German university and continuing his studies in bachelor's in physics. Right? Yep. Give us an impression about your profile. Tell us a bit about where do you come from? How long are you here in Germany? What was your 12th score? How much was your score in mains and in advanced? Tell us a bit about that. I'm Abhi. I'm originally from Uttar Pradesh, Ghazibat, and uh, I cleared my 12th in 2018 with a PCM percentage of 95%. After that, well, uh, like many of the PCM students, I did JE mains and advanced. In mains, I had a rank of approximately 38,000, and in advanced, I had a 17,000 rank. Both of these exams helped me to get direct admission in German university in the University of Bonn, uh, where I'm studying for past one and a half years approximately in my fourth semester of physics, bachelor's in physics. That's pretty much it. Quick question for you before we go ahead. Is your course is in German or English taught program? Well, my course is German taught program. When it is in German taught program, when did you start learning German then? Yeah, so I completed my JE mains and advanced exams. That is uh, to give you a proper timeline. I completed all of it in May 2018. Right. After that, I started learning German and uh, in January, I gave C1 exam. Wow, okay. So one thing is established that you need to learn German, but he was also saying that some of his friends are currently studying in TUM who have come through the same procedure but they are studying in English, right? Yeah, so there's a course in uh, Technical University of Munich which is called Management and Engineering and which is in English. So it is one of the most sought after course for international students, especially from India because it gives you a good mix of engineering and uh, management. management. And many of my companions, they have chosen that. So. Right. Let's get to the crucial part of the discussion now. Can you elaborate a bit more about the scores what you've got with your mains and advanced because how does the whole thing works we were just talking behind the camera but like maybe for audience if you can explain because you were talking that you need to have mm -hmm. AIR yeah, and sure. all that so the thing is that uh, approximately to give to give the estimate more than 10 lakh people participate for JE mains every year right. out of that approximately 2.5 lakhs they qualify JE mains and after that they get to give JE advance which is then approximately 30,000 of these students they get an AIR so qualification in JE advance what I mean to say is you should have an AIR is it one or is it 30,000 that doesn't matter at all okay. so you just need to have an AIR in JE advance you need to have an AIR in JE mains I had uh, 17,000 AIR in advance and uh, 38,000 in J uh, mains. You just need to have the certificate that you have got an AIR and then uh, the, the evaluation of your application, the grade, it will be evaluated on the basis of your 12th grade, especially in the field in which you want to go. So for example, if I were to go in physics, so my grade in physics would be rather important than my qualification in that, but it, it's just a stepping stone. Just to simplify this whole thing, wait a second. <laughs> so, so what he said, especially the last part is, the decision for bachelor's studies comes out of, based on your 12th grade, not how much you've scored in mains and advance. Yep. Right? That's precisely so. That's what he wanted to say. Apart from that, uh, you also mentioned about AIR, All India Ranking. So, out of those, let's say 30,000 people who have got their All India Ranking, even from that, only I think 5,000 or what, 11,000 people get selected and they go to IIT? Yeah, so there are technically 11 to 13,000 seats. I'm not right on numbers, but uh, approximately in that bracket. And uh, out of that also, so many students just, uh, in premier IIT institutes, it's just five to 6,000. Right, so I mean, the point is, if there are a total of 30,000 who have qualified, if all the seats are filled out in IITs, what do other people do? This could be a good gateway for them to come here and study in Germany directly. Yeah, the idea is that students do a lot of hard work to qualify this ex this particular True. exam and uh, it's a good thing to know that they have certain another path to choose as well outside IITs because all this hard work can pay off in some other German university which, which can be totally worth it. From past experiences and past merit lists, we can say that approximately 30,000 people out of those 2.5 lakh who clear J means they get in rank. Right. But if you have more than that, uh, yeah, so you will not be given any papers. Basically. Yeah, exactly. So when you, to, to just to say it as simply as possible, on the website when you log in with your ID and stuff, so you get a message on your screen, this is your AIR and that's it. If you have an AIR, that is your go-through way, otherwise not. So take that AIR and your 12th grade and apply in German University basically. And J main, yeah. And in J mains, yeah. Let's move forward. 
can you talk a bit about how does the rest of the process look like from there on i have my 12th grade uh, by the way he scored 95 in 12th 95 in pcm pcm yeah so to, i have my 12th i have my iit mains results i have my iit advanced mm-hmm. results with me i have these three things what happens next well uh, the thing is now uh, j mains and j advanced you don't have a certificate per se you, mm-hmm. when you clear it you really don't get a certificate at your house that you have cleared it yeah so you sometimes have to be a bit of a ankle biter with the authorities for some people in some universities it has worked out in simpler ways for some it was difficult so how i went through it i'll i'll let you guys know that so first of all you need to figure out who is conducted j who has conducted j mains and j advance for that year for, for j mains it was usually cbsc until 2018 but now it's national testing agency and for j advance it is different iits every year mm-hmm. so you need to figure out which iit has conducted j advance and once you figure out you need to kind of look into who was the who has organized the exams you know there is always a certain professor who is organizing the stuff you mail them and uh, depending upon how cooperative they are they'll reply you timely as soon as possible as according what's to their what's the idea behind what are we trying to achieve with this yeah so then they need to give you a written certificate that okay. you have clarified you have this following rank with their signature down there this is one way and also in the similar pattern you have to go to cbse office you have to ask for the similar certificate wherein your rank is stated with the signature of the organizer so both these certificates are necessary well uh, this was how i applied but uh, some of the students some of my companions with the same thing they also went through it like uh, they just had this snapshot of the screen of uh, of where this air is displayed they just showed that to okay. the university well that's a very simpler way that also functions sometimes the official version got to be the signed document of your certificate so i take these two documents and yep. 12th grade and 12th now grade now what happens you need to submit all this you need of course just like a common application you need to design your application with cv and stuff and you need to send all the documents depending upon what universities are you applying there is always a portal of uni assist and then there's application direct application where you got to mail all the stuff to them so uh, university of bonn they accept mails i made all my documents ready and dispatched it to university of bonn all right so this is where we're going to start talking about the cost of living for your entire education of bachelors in germany what is the fees are you paying to a university well in all the german universities you don't really have tuition fees so you have a semester contribution which is 300 euros in university of bonn which uh, amounts to approximately 1800 euros for the entire period of bachelors that is 3 years two semesters each considering the other cost of living which is uh, in particular only residence groceries and insurance mm-hmm. those are the major chunks well when it comes to residence and if you are in uh, a university apartment which is pretty much the same uh, like uh, in all all throughout the bond which is which can cost you around 250 to 300 euros a month then comes insurance which is also kind of fixed uh, the government insurance which is 103 euros approximately nowadays and uh, then groceries which can amount somewhere to 80 to 130 40 for a standard one person right what is the end of the month are we looking at end of the month the total sum would be approximately somewhere 400 to 500 right for a, for a standard indian living right 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 um just to throw a bit more extra light if you're totally new uh to the whole cost of living topic in germany when you're flying for the first time you're supposed to show government 10300 euros which is also called as blocked account so your money 10300 in whatever currency you want to have that that will be then converted into uh, euros blocked in a german account when you come here there is a procedure to follow to start unblocking the amount what you have blocked from your home country that's the story of first year but what about second and third year is students can already start when they come here in their first, while they're in their first year they have a permission to work here as a part time job uh, for 20 hours that makes you a good healthy living with with respect to money and what you're uh, eating where you're staying and all of that the money for second and third year can already be you can start working on it for first year onwards abhi one last piece of advice from your side to all those students who might be thinking to come through this route of yours so the thing is that students do a lot of hard work for a entire period of 2 to 3 years to get this uh, clearance itj mains in advance which is a pretty difficult exam and for those more than 10 lakh people only 30000 of them get 
an AIR and then you know how the further filtering works right also what the purpose of this video was like I I wanted to tell I wanted to convey that there is always an alternative right so if not IITs you have an option you have an option you just need to explore right well for me the risk has been worth it right just to add to his point it's also about all those efforts what you took with the dream of entering an IIT and then you don't make up to that at least that AIR all in your ranking can be utilized and channelized in a direction maybe something which you were looking for maybe a premium institution like IIT or maybe sitting in Germany and studying exact the same subjects or having a different level of exposure again the point is if you go into IIT of course it's world-renowned institution no doubt in that he's a good example for us to look up to that what if I was not able to make it there I could still find a way there's something like this also thank you so much for tuning in if you like this video please hit that like button and uh, yeah I'll see you guys next time bye bye